Good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. May peace be upon you. Shalom. My name is Sumaya Khalifa. I'm the executive director and founder of the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta, the organizers of today's uh, event. Thank you so much to each one of you for coming. Today we come to be together as brothers and sisters to mourn the loss of the victims of New Zealand. But more importantly, we are together today to keep on building the beloved community and creating a better future for all of us. Before I start, I want to tell you some housekeeping. First of all, very important, the bathrooms. Uh, if, if anybody needs to use the facilities, there are several people around that have volunteer badges on. Please flag one of them and they will be able to escort you to the bathrooms. I also want to thank all the organizations that have partnered with us to make today possible. And of course, the, uh, the Al Farouk Masjid, um, who so graciously hosted our event today. So please give them a big hand. <laughs> our collaborating organizations, Congregation Beth Habarim, the Episcopal Diocese of Atlanta, the Temple, our supporting organizations, AA Synagogue, the Atlanta Jewish Film Festival, the Atlanta Masjid of Islam, Atlanta Rabbinical Association, the Baha'i Community of Atlanta, Care Georgia, Compassion in Atlanta, Faith Alliance of Metro Atlanta, Faith in Public Life, Greenview, Maddie Center of Lawrenceville, the Interfaith Community Initiative, Interfaith Power and Light, Islamic Community Center of Atlanta, JCRC, the Jewish Voices for Peace, Masjid al Mu'minin, Muslimas Endure, Outcry, Santan Mandir Smyrna, Sisterhood of Salam Shalom Atlanta, United Muslim Relief, Welcoming America, and Women Interfaith Network. So please give all those organizations a big hand for us. On Friday, March the 15th, 2019, a shooter killed 51 people attending the Friday Congregational Prayer in Christ Church, New Zealand. On that day and the days and weeks that follow, the world was in pain again for losing 51 innocent human beings. That's of course after shootings in Charleston and in Pittsburgh. We grieve together and we grieve separately. We also saw human, compa uh, human compassion at its best with people of all backgrounds going to the different mosques all over the world to show their compassion, bringing flowers, bringing notes of love and sisterhood and brotherhood. We also witnessed genuine leadership at its finest from Prime, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. So please give a hand to all those people who were there for their brothers and sisters. For our gathering today, we will hear from faith leaders and, re and friends. We will start off by reading uh, the verses from the Muslim holy book, the Quran, by Mr. Hassan Fay. Hassan is the youth director for Mass Atlanta. Hassan? Good afternoon to everyone. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء ولكن لا تشعرون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 
ولا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أمواتا بل أحياء عند ربهم يرزقون فرحين بما آتاهم الله من فضله ويستبشرون بالذين لم يلحقوا بهم من خلفهم ألا خوف عليهم ألا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون صدق الله العظيم Hassan, thank you very much, and welcome back to Atlanta. We had lost him for a little bit to uh, Texas, but I'm glad he's back. I'm going to read uh, the possible translation of what Hassan read from the Quran. In the name of God, most compassionate, most merciful. O you who believe, seek help through patience and prayers. God is with the steadfast. And do not say of those who are killed in the cause of God, dead. Rather, they are alive, but you do not perceive. Think not of those who have been slain in the cause of God are dead. Nay, they are living in the presence of their Lord and are guaranteed gifts from him. Jubilant because of that which God has given them of his bounty and rejoicing for those who have not yet joined them from behind them because on them shall come no fear nor shall they grieve. So that was from verses from the Holy Quran in chapters uh, 2 and chapters 3. Next, we have some words from the Chairman of the Board for the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta, Dr. Nabil Safdar. I'd like to uh, ask the fellow board members of the ISB that are present to join me, please. Welcome. Welcome on behalf of the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta, and the Muslim community here in Atlanta. With some of the work that we do, we have been welcomed to churches, to synagogues, to temples, to gurdwaras, schools, and places of government. I always feel like I am returning to God when I am in the presence of my brothers and sisters from different faiths and those brothers and sisters that have no faith when we come together to get to know each other better. We have learned that houses of worship are especially welcoming places, even though we may pray and worship differently. And that's why when people in houses of worship and houses of worship, whether a synagogue in Pennsylvania, a church in Louisiana, a Gurdwara, a temple, or a mosque in Christchurch, and the people within it are attacked, we all grieve together. And that's what brothers and sisters do. They share moments of joy, they agree, sometimes they disagree, and they also share their grief. Daoud Nabi a 71-year-old refugee in Christchurch greeted the attacker that day with the phrase, hello, brother. And in memory of him, we'd like to welcome you all to the vigil here today with the same phrase, hello, sister, hello, brother. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Safdar, and all the amazing ISV board members, and also the advisory board members. Uh, we are very fortunate today uh, to have the Honorable Ian Latham. Did I say that right? Close enough, right? OK, good. Um, the Honorary Council of New Zealand. Uh, he is based here in Atlanta, and we are just so, so very honored to have him uh, say a few words to us.
Tena kotu, tena kotu, tena kotu katawa. Greetings to you, greetings to you, greetings to all of us. I just spoke to you in Maori. It's one of the two official languages of New Zealand. Maori is the language of the first people of New Zealand. English is the second language of New Zealand. Our country is a country of about five million people, about the same size as Ireland or Norway. But we are a nation of 200 ethnicities and 160 languages are spoken in New Zealand. And that's why the events of a month ago hurt even more. We are a multicultural society and we're proud of it. Our Muslim community is over 50,000 people from all walks of life, students, families, engineers, teachers, refugees, our friends and neighbors, our colleagues, the people we work with, people we go to school with, people we know. On that awful day, our Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, spoke for all New Zealanders. She found a way to put into words what all of us were thinking and all of us were feeling. And in the Parliament the next day, she spoke very simply to the members of Parliament who were there and to the people of New Zealand. She said, peace be upon you, and peace be upon all of us. The 15th of March will now forever be a day etched in our collective memories. On a quiet Friday afternoon, a person stormed into a place of peaceful worship and took away the lives of 50 people and later the lives of one other. That quiet Friday afternoon has become the darkest of our days. But for the families, it was more than that. It was the day that the simple act of prayer, of practicing their Muslim faith and religion, led to the loss of their loved ones. Those loved ones were brothers and daughters, fathers and children. They were New Zealanders. They are us. And we, as a nation, we mourn them. Six days after the attack, the call to prayer was broadcast throughout New Zealand on all radio and television stations, and thousands of New Zealanders attended prayers across the country. My honor today, on behalf of all New Zealanders, is to thank you for standing with us. Thank you for your support, and thank you for your love. Like you, we pray, pray for those who were lost, those who were hurt and will never be the same, those who love and care for them, and for all New Zealanders. As a nation, we open our doors to the world and we say, welcome. Those doors must never close but we believe they must close against those who proclaim hatred and fear. The Maori greeting I shared at the opening uh, are the same words, the, the words of greeting are the same words Maori used to say thank you. In Maori, hello and thank you are the same words. I repeat them. Tina koutou, tina koutou, Tinakotu Katao. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you. Now we hear from our host, Dr. Khalid Sadiq of Al Farouk Masjid. Namadu Nusali Allah Rasul Al Karim, Auz Billahi Manish Shaitan Rajim, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. My respected guests, collaborating partners, Islamic Speakers Bureau, and the Honorary Consul Ian Latham, 
We welcome you all. What a beautiful gathering. It is said that America is a melting pot. I have a different take on it. I think that each one of us, with the richness of our values and traditions, is like a diamond, which while maintaining its own identity and radiance, beautifies the tapestry of America. That is what we see here today. We see persons of different colors, different traditions, different ethnic backgrounds, speaking different languages, coming from different lands. And this the Quran defines as the ayat, or the signs of the creator, who created each and one of us with inherent goodness at its core. Inherent goodness at the core of every human being. But it is sad that it takes tragedies like the one in New Zealand to bring that goodness into the open, that love and compassion and trust to exhibit itself. It is ironic that it takes tearing apart of the hearts to bring bodies together. But we have come together, and I'm proud to be a part of this interfaith gathering. We, the Muslims, are humbled by the overwhelming support from all over the world in the wake of this tragedy. And this wonderful gathering in Atlanta is an example of humanity at its best. And we, Het al Farooq, are honored, are honored to be hosting this event. With open arms and loving hearts, and prayers for a better future and a brighter future, we welcome you all and greet you with the greetings of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. Thank you, Dr. Khaled. As we all know, our Christian brother and sisters will be celebrating Easter next weekend. Our Jewish brothers and sisters will be observing Passover. And as we know, the Muslims will be fasting Ramadan in less than a month. So it is, we're entering into very holy times for the three Abrahamic traditions. And I'm sure there are a lot more tra tradition celebrations during that time as well. So with that being said, we're gonna turn over to our religious leaders, and hearing from the Jewish community, uh, invite Rabbi Peter Berg to come and give us a Jewish prayer. Rabbi Berg is the chief rabbi at the temple. He is also a member of the Islamic Speakers Bureau Advisory Council, and we're very honored to have him with us today. Rabbi Berg. From the Jewish prayer book. When evil darkens our world, let us be bearers of light. When fists are clenched in self-righteous rage, let our hands open for the sake of peace. When injustice slams the door on the ill, the poor, the old, the stranger, let us pry the doors open. Where shelter is lacking, let us be builders. Where food and clothing are needed, let us be providers. Where knowledge is denied, let us be champions of learning. When dissent is stifled, let our voices speak truth to power. When the earth and its creatures are threatened, let us be their guardians. When bias, greed, bigotry erode our country's values, let us proclaim liberty throughout the land. Bumakom she'ain anashim hishtadel lihiot ish. In places where no one acts like a human being, let us bring courage, let us bring compassion, let us bring humanity. Dear friends, salom aleichem. I bring greetings on behalf of the Temple and the Atlanta Rabbinical Association the six rabbis from Atlanta who are here today, and all of the rabbis in the greater Atlanta metro area, 
from all of the different Jewish denominations who are here today in heart and in spirit. Brothers and sisters of all faiths, we stand together in our grief with the devastated families of the Christchurch New Zealand Muslim community. For this despicable act of violence was an assault on all Muslims, on all Jews, on all Christians, on all faiths, on all of God's children. The first reason, the most important reason for our gathering today is to remember the victims, 51 beautiful souls whose lives were tragically ended in the middle of their Friday holy prayers by a deranged gunman, by a white supremacist. Today, we gather to remember the lives who were taken for the sanctification of God's name far too soon. They were quiet and they had good hearts. Some pursued justice and some were pious. Some loved to be around other people. Some built and loved animals. Some ate junk food and laughed aloud. They were loving parents. They were husbands and wives, siblings and cousins, aunts and uncles, and the closest of personal friends. They were grateful and they were generous and they were pillars in their community, in their mosques, in their families. They were students of the Holy Koran. Today our prayers cast us backward into our memories, our souls tattooed with the lives of the people we remember. Today they live within each and every one of us. The Hebrew word for remembrance, yizkur, doesn't just mean to remember, it means to think of all of the stories that preceded us, to remind ourselves of those who today live within our precious souls. That's the second purpose for our gathering, to pray for the victims' families, for our nation and for our world. Today we pray in many different voices and even we pray in different languages. Despite those in our world who try to tear us down, we are here today to say that we are one people. We are one God. Eloheinu ve'elohei avoteinu ve'imoteinu. Our God and God of our ancestors. Our hearts are once again touched and broken by destruction. You created us from love and you call us to love and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Once again, we find ourselves facing the reality that fear is among us instead of love. And so we pray for the families and friends of those who were murdered. We pray for the Muslim community globally and extend love and comfort and peace in the midst of yet another tragic moment. We pray for healing for the injured and that God will spread a shelter of peace over us and over our world. And that leads to the third purpose for our gathering today, to acknowledge the cancer that is Islamophobia. My Muslim friends tell me every single day and I know that the Jewish community feels the same way, how hard it is to put into words what it is like to be Muslim in a world in which Islamophobic incidents have increased so dramatically every single day. Today we gather together to reject the ideology of white supremacy and any, any religious justification for it. The white supremacist who shot Muslims in worship cited virulent hatred. Today, the Jewish community stands strong with our Muslim friends and neighbors. We stand in solidarity to condemn the rhetoric and the actions that lead to violence, hatred, and destruction. Today is a call to the entire faith community to continue to overcome anti-Islamic sentiment through engagement and education in all of our own places of worship. 
to remain vigilant in countering all forms of bigotry based on religion, race, or any category of identity. Atlanta, our city that is far too busy to hate, must come together, business leaders, religious leaders, civic leaders, politicians. Today, we have come to ask all of you to stand together to put an end not only to Islamophobia, to anti-Semitism, to anti-Christian persecution, to all forms of sexism, racism, homophobia, xenophobia, all forms of hatred. This vigil today is a call to action, not to be passive observers, where for a few moments our thoughts and prayers are with you, but rather for all of us to roll up our sleeves, to work together to create a better world for our children and for our children's children. God, we are not okay today. My Muslim friends are not okay today, and our world is not okay today. So let us turn to one another, and let us turn to you, O oh God, out of the depths of our crying, saying to each other and to you, we are not okay. Though our faith is certain, our hope is weary, and we trust that love will be the greatest, that your love, O oh God, will sustain us and carry us even when we are not okay. For God, in all of our different languages, we come together to say today that we need you. We need you, and we are tired of not being okay. Peter, thank you so much. That was lovely. Thank you. Thank you. I just saw that we have a guest that just came in, Dr. Robert Franklin. How are you, sir? Glad you're here. All right, next we will hear from Dr., which I just found out, uh, Dr. Sarush Bishad. He is from the Baha'i community of Atlanta and just found out that he knows uh, my son. Uh, he's a doctor at Emory, an eye doctor at Emory, and we're so glad you're here. Sarush, please come on up. On behalf of the Atlanta Baha'i community and the over 30 Baha'i communities in the Atlanta metro area, I express our profound sorrow for the innocent uh, who lost their lives in this terrorist attack while at their place of worship. Even with weeks passing since the deadly attack in Christ Church, we are still mourning. Although tragic, events like these can bring us together like it has today, to admire the diversity and the beauty in our community, and create a newfound resolve and dedication to eradicate prejudice and hatred from our society. As I sat here and listened to the other speakers and continue to listen to the common spiritual qualities of all the faiths gathered here today, such as unity, tolerance, and kindness. These are the potent powers of human spirit that can establish unity, justice, and harmony. Let us reflect on our shared identity, not only as Americans, but as members of a single human race. Let us pray that nothing like this ever happens again, and I would like to share a Baha'i prayer for the departed. O oh my God, O oh thou forgiver of sins, bestower of gifts, and dispeller of afflictions, verily I beseech thee to forgive the sins of such as have abandoned the spiritual, have abandoned the physical garment and have ascended to the spiritual world. O oh my Lord, purify them from trespasses, dispel their sorrows, and change their darkness into light. Cause them to enter the garden of happiness cleanse them with the most pure water, and grant them to behold the splendors on the loftiest mount. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Sarush. Uh, now we hear from Imam Fleeman El Amin. And Imam Fleeman El Amin, I think he is the most famous Atlanta Muslim or even American Muslim. And we are so honored to have him here today. Imam Fleeman. Assalamu alaikum. I, I, I can't handle that, the most famous Atlanta Muslim. No. We have some that are much more famous and some that are much more infamous as well. So this is a beautiful setting. We thank all of you for being here. Uh, this, this is sacred ground. Uh, Meshel El Farouk is a very, very special place here in, in uh, really downtown, midtown Atlanta, uh, where you can see the downtown uh, buildings and, and, and right across in the midst of Georgia Tech and all of that. Uh, and so yes, it, it, it is a little windy and a little sunny, but just think about it, a few hours ago, it was pouring down rain. So it's a blessing. The wind is a blessing, the sun is a blessing. Don't take it for granted. Let us be grateful. It is uh, special. We live in special times that now even your coming to a mosque or even a church or a synagogue, you can't take it for granted. You have to be conscious that you are making a sacrifice. You're putting yourself in a position of danger, perhaps, when you come here. And you have proven that that danger did not stop you and will not stop you. And every time we step in a synagogue, step in a mosque, step in a temple, step in a, a church, it makes us more conscious that it's about worship and not just routine. Allah says in Quran, if he did not check one set of people by means of another, they would surely have been destroyed. Monasteries, churches, synagogues, and mosques in which the name of God is commemorated in abundant measure. Allah says he will surely aid those who work in his cause, and verily he is full of strength and knowledge. Allah says, be not weary and faint-hearted crying for peace when you should be uppermost, for Allah is with you and will never put you in loss for your good deeds. Let us pray. O oh God, merciful benefactor, merciful redeemer, healer of broken hearts, we gather today remembering the 51 martyrs of 30 days past in, church, in Christ Church, New Zealand. O oh Allah, we come together here at Masjid Al Farouk, thinking about and praying for the families of the Linwood Islamic Center and El Noor Mosque in New Zealand. We come together as Muslims, Christians, Jews, Buddhists, Hindus, Sikh, Baha'is, and others, not forgetting but also remembering the 11 of the Tree of Life Synagogue, the 17 of Parkland, the 13 of a Thousand Oaks, the 58 of Las Vegas, the Sutherland Springs Church 26, the Pulse 49, the Mother Emanuel AME 9, the Sandy Hook 27, and too, too many others. We pray for them and their families as we remind ourselves of the words that you gave us in Quran Think not of those who die in the way of God as dead, nay, they live, finding their substance in the presence of their Lord. O oh God, we ask that you deepen our faith in life beyond the veil of death. Deepen our faith in your mercy and your compassion and your justice. O oh Allah, give us the strength and fortitude to collaborate across faiths, across ethnicities, and backgrounds, to stand up, to speak out, to work against hate, racism, terror, vanity, and self-righteousness pretending to be patriotism. Heal our nations and heal our world 
Protect our city and our homes. Protect us from fear that cripples, from hate that murders, from racism that subjugates, and from distrust that divides. Oh God, empower our tears, relieve our souls, purify our hearts, clarify our thoughts, engage our hands, bless our gathering, and answer our prayers. Oh Allah, guide us among those whom you've guided aright. Preserve us among those whom you have preserved. Take us for friends among those whom you have befriended. Bless us in that which you have bestowed upon us. Empower our young, protect our elderly. O oh God, leave no sin of ours unforgiven, no anxiety of ours unrelieved, no need that you have given us unfulfilled, no potential unrealized. There is no deity except you and you alone. You have no partner. Yours is the sovereignty. Yours is the praise. Oh God, illuminate our hearts, illuminate our eyes, relieve our minds, and make our prayers worthy of you and our worship fulfilling. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Van Pleeman. The 51 victims of the New Zealand shootings, they were as young as three years old. And an older gentleman who we now know through his, the hashtag that's been used, hello brother. Reflection about those who were slain in New Zealand ranged from he jumped in the firing line to save somebody else's life and he has been and he has passed on I've lost my little boy he just turned 14 they were just looking for a safe place to live those are some of the reflections about the 51 human beings we lost a month ago today we have four people who will be reading their names and I ask them to please come on up. They are Trey Walker from the Episcopal Diocese Youth Commission, Abir Sabiri, a student at UGA and a member of the ISB, Ashraf Abu Khalaf with the ISB, and Felicia Goodman with Sisterhood Salam Shalom. Mukab Ibrahim, Haji Daoub Nabi, Husna Ahmed, Sayad Milne, Atta Elayan, Amjad Hamid, Ansi Alibaba, Ali Ali Madini, Naeem Rashid, Tala Naeem. Lilik Abdul Hamid, Khalid Mustafa, Hamza Mustafa, Linda Armstrong, Faraj Ahsan, Sayed Jahandand Ali, Hafiz Musa Patel, Dalik Amar, Junaid Ismail, Hussein Mustafa. Zishan Raza, Gulam Hussein, Karam Bibi, Hussein Awumari, Kamel Darwish, Suhail Shahid, Abdel Fattah Qasem, Arif Bahai Vora, Ramiz Vora, Harun Mahmoud, Dr. Mohamel Haq, Ozer Kadir, Muhammad Haziz Mo Tarmizi. Sayyid Arib Ahmed Mohsin Al Harbi, Ahmed Gamal Din Muhammad Abdul Ghani, Abdul Qadir Ilmi, Usama Adnan Yusuf Abu Quek, 
Moose, Noor, Alwadi, Munir, Georges, Suleiman, Muhammad, Abdul Samad, Ashraf, Ali, Matiullah, Safi, Ashraf, Al Musri, Raghib, Muhammad, Musid, Muhammad, Hussein. For all those who are able, I ask you to rise. And for those who are not, please rise in spirit. You should take a moment in silence as we call to mind their memories, as we honor their life. I invite you to repeat after me. Salam. Shanti. Shalom, peace, salam, shanti, shalom, peace, salam, shanti, shalom, peace. May their memories be for a blessing. Please be seated. Thank you, Rabbi Joshua Lesser. So we're moving on to our next segment of our time together today, and that is continue building the beloved community. And I'm going to ask Dr. Robert Franklin to please come on up. Dr. Franklin has had many titles. I've lost track. And I'm going to ask you to please tell us what is your current title and give us a few words about building the beloved community. Dr. Franklin. Thank you. It is my honor to stand on this sacred ground. Like many of you, I drove past this corner during the months and years that its building was being constructed, and now this great prayer center, this place where we seek enlightenment is here. And I was here on the t day that it was opened and welcomed visitors. So it is a special honor to be here today with you, a special honor to stand before these, all of them, my, my teachers and teachers, the conscience of a great city, and to all of you who gather. Dr. King said that this hour in history needs a dedicated circle of transformed nonconformists. The saving of our world from pending doom will come not from the actions of a conforming majority, but from the creative maladjustment of a transformed minority. Martin Luther King. And then I hear today the words of the 13th century Muslim poet Rumi, yesterday I was clever and so I tried to change the world. Today I am wise, so I am changing myself. That is the challenge for each of us, changing ourselves. Conflict is normal, but violence, the habit of violence, is pathological, it is sick, and we must challenge it and root it out. And so I hear in the prayers today given by our leaders this invitation to let go, but also to stand together as one in this unity service to say to the world, no. Atlanta says no to violence, no to the destruction of the light of God in the light and the soul and heart of every human being. And so I take hope from this gathering today and thank you to the visionaries who invited us and who planned and made this possible. Our diversity, our unity is our hope, is our great defense, is the wall against violence. 
and hatred. And I conclude with the words of another great teacher, another great medieval teacher, from Rabbi Maimonides, that the world is equally balanced between good and evil, and our next act will tip the scale. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Franklin. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure and honor to invite my good friend, Sushetta Kamath, from the Santan Mandir of Smyrna, and a speaker with the Interfaith Speakers Network, who will offer a prayer for building our beloved community from the Hindu tradition. Namaste. From Hindu prayer book, Bhagavad Gita, I'm reciting chapter 11, verse 12. Divi sahasra sahasrasya bhave dugar prathutrita yadi bhaha sudish sa sya sangatasya mahatmanan. If there, there be the effulgence of thousand suns, bursting forth all at once in the heavens, even that would be hardly ap appropriate for the splendor of the mighty Lord. The meaning here is that God's effulgence is unlimited and it cannot be quantified in terms of even the effulgence of sun. So here we are trying to make sense of the actions that we don't have the greatest understanding. So dear brothers and sisters, my sincere pronouns as I bring a message of compassion, love and hope from the Sanatan Mandir, which is a Hindu temple in Smyrna, as well as all Hindu uh, communities in Atlanta, 32 or more, and in United States and all over the world. The Hindu faith reminds, us, reminds me to love each other um, in a loving kindness. Hindu faith asks me to test my patience and resolve in the face of disturbances and atrocities and remind me that it's not me. The Hindu faith reminds me that one who has forgotten the true nature of self hates instead of loving. The Hindu faith sees love to be the inner divine spirit and love is everything. The Hindu faith says love never forgets. And by the act of loving, you are reminded forever and you are remi remembering forever. The Hindu faith provides me with the strength to know that what, when my brother and sister hurts, they shall not be felt left alone in their time of need. Love is understanding. Love is putting, putting yourself second. Love is surrender. And love is loving. I am here to love my Muslim brothers and sisters and to assure you that you are loved and we shall together forgive those who fail to do so. Asatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mrityuma Amrito Gamaya, Om Shanti Shanti Shantihi. Lead me from ignorance to enlightenment, lead me from darkness to light, lead me from death to immortality, and I pranam with Shanti or peace, peace, and peace. So let's together love together and love always. I would invite you all to join me in prayers. Loka, Samastha, Sukhino, Bhavantu. May Lord bless us all. Thank you so much. Now we bring Dr. Durley. Dr. Durley is 
Pastor Emeritus for Providence Missionary Baptist Church. Dr. Durley carries many titles. If I am to read you all his titles, we'll be here forever. But he's also an ISV Advisory Council member, and we really are very fortunate to have him with us today. Dr. Durley? Namastad. Shalom. I shalom alaikum. Peace. Dr. King would be thrilled to sit here in the city of Atlanta and look at the beloved community. Look to your left, look to your right, look behind you at the beloved community and give yourselves a round of applause. Oh, you can do better than that. This is what Dr. King gave his life and so many other the great prophets did. It's very interesting that when I was growing up and I was in school and I studied, about the four seasons. And they told me that there was summer, winter, spring, and fall. And I thought that those were the four seasons. And I told my children and my grandchildren that those were the four seasons. But in the Christian tradition, we have another season that I think exemplifies today. Uh, a season that we don't talk about that much, but is epitomized by those of us who have assembled here in this holy place. In our tradition, we say, be ye not weary in well-doing, for you will reap in due season. Due season. Due season is when God calls us together. Due season is when God gives us the ability to look beyond our faults and see our needs. Due season is when we can come together across religious and faith lines and denominational differences. This is due season, and it says we will reap if we faint not. We come today so that we will not faint. We come today because there is power in prayer. We come today because when we join hands and hearts and minds and spirits together, we will never be defeated because this is our season, this is our time, this is our moment, this is our day, this is our occasion because today is due season. It is not fall, winter, spring, but due season. And in due season, one of the ways that we find strength is that we go to God and we talk with God. So join with me, join with me in reverence. Bow your hearts and your minds and your spirits as we talk with God. In the name of all of the faiths which have given hope, peace and comfort to all of God's creatures and creation for centuries, we come, bow, and pray. It is once again that God has personally summoned us to this very sacred place to share our common grief, pain for an unimaginable act of hate and ignorance. For, against the people in New Zealand. We have come with bowed heads, uplifted hands, saddened hearts, tear-filled eyes to collectively speak up and out against the atrocious, atrocious act perpetrated on our brothers, our sisters, our elderly, and our children in New Zealand. Fear has engulfed the world and produced heinous crimes of violence against God's loving and worshiping people. We have come today as one people. We've come with one voice to pray for the victims who were. Maliciously murdered. We ask that you would provide them comfort and spiritual strength to overcome this perverted demonstration of displaced health, hate. We have come today from near and far as Jews, Buddhists, Christians, Baha'i, Hindu, atheists, and Muslims, and other beliefs to, to seek your divine guidance as we collectively ask for your ever presence, wisdom, to prevent this from ever happening again. Yes, we are angry, and yes, we are disappointed, hurt, frustrated, and in need of your sovereign counsel to encourage us to pursue the high road of forgiveness and remind us to never forget that each of our faith has a moral responsibility to stand up and speak out when any of your children are accosted and are destroyed. Thank you, dear God, for the interfaith community of Atlanta to come together to give us this very special occasion. Continue to grant us the grace 
to continue to unite, to work together, to laugh together, to love one another, and to pray together. God, we realize that now we are a compassionate people, and we will never bow down. We will never break. We will never back up. We will never bend. This is our moment. This is our special time. God, touch each one of us that when we leave this place, that we will leave with a special anointing, a newness of who we are and whose we are. We will leave holding our brothers and sisters' hands. And when we go down 14th Street, when we go up Peach Street, when we go to our houses of worship, we will thank you, God, for bringing us together. This is our time. And all those in agreement said, amen. 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 I can't hear you. Let them hear you on Peach Street. God bless you. Thank you. Dr. Durley, thank you. Wow. I don't know about you, but I feel so empowered and so loved. I'm going to ask my friend, Dr. Uh, Rabbi, jo I just gave you a doctorate degree. Rabbi Josh Lesser, uh, who will speak to us about moving forward in an interfaith vision that he has for us. Josh. I think there's always a, a special kind of punishment reserved for the person who has to speak after Dr. Durley. I remember September 11th, 2001. It was a time when there was tremendous pain and confusion. Here in Atlanta, our interfaith community was barely in conversation we were hurting, we were confused. Many of us did not know who to turn to. I myself was barely a rabbi here in Atlanta just over a year, and I was grateful for a call that came from some of the people who are up here to get together and talk about how we must know our neighbors here in Atlanta, how we must have a vision that none of us should be alone, should be confused or afraid without the support of our faith community. And slowly we forged relationships. And from those relationships, many things, many beautiful things came. The Faith Alliance of Metro Atlanta, World Pilgrims. There was a deep desire, a calling, a need for us to know one another, for us to be better informed about each other's faiths, for us to bring a sense of respect, a sense of care and support. We wanted to know one another's vision. We wanted to understand what hurt the other. And more importantly, we wanted to find ways that we could stand together. And so, whether it was after the tragic shootings of Mother Emanuel, the Tree of Life Synagogue in, Philly, in, Pen in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or in Christ Church, New Zealand, we weren't confused. We knew who to call. We reached out to one another and said, we must organize. We must find a way to stand together. There's a line from Psalm 97. In Hebrew, it's Or Zaru Al which means light, seeds of light even, are planted for the righteous. When I look out at all of you, I see that sense of righteousness. I envision that what we are doing here today, in honor of the memories of those who are lost, is we are planting seeds. We are planting seeds of light. We are saying that there is something important about this city, about this community, and our faith traditions that are worth preserving and honoring, even in the midst of pain and destruction. We are saying that we want to invest in a future, a future that will be different for our children and the next generation that will come after them. 
And so I invite us to begin to think about that future. I've had a lot of people in the last two or three years come and talk to me about hope. Rabbi, I am feeling hopeless. There is one challenge after the another. People, maybe they weren't aware, are starting to wake up. They're starting to recognize that there is a divisiveness and even a supremacy that is in our country that wants to root out what we hold dear, what keeps us strong, what has us be able to look at each other's eyes and see our common humanity. There's a deep fear and dread and people are asking, where is their hope? Now I'm of the variety that doesn't believe that hope is something that just happens or manifests. Much like this wind, hope needs to be an active force. It needs to cleanse and clear. We need to beckon that sense of hope. This action of joining us together this afternoon is an act of hope. It is planting those seeds of light. One of the founders of the Reconstructionist movement, the movement that I'm a part of, talked about for us to have hope. And he was writing after the Holocaust. So he understood in many ways the kind of divisiveness and pain that many of us are feeling today. He said that we have to prepare the ground and really examine in our faith traditions the triumphalism, the supremacy, the exceptionalism that get in the way, that create barriers around us, that not only don't allow us to celebrate together, but more importantly, it doesn't allow for us to be in constructive dialogue and even sometimes conflict with one another with respect and care because we understand that there is a common good that we are all bound to. And today, I heard there were messages from the Pope that said the same thing as Catholics begin Holy Week or Christian community begins our Holy Week. He said that one of the greatest challenges of our faith community is the triumphalism that we carry. A scholar, Dr. Najiba Saeed, who talks about peace building, who understands from a Muslim perspective the need to bring together people in order to be able to engage so that we're not just grieving and mourning, but we're building something together. She says, we have to examine the triumphalism, the exceptionalism, the supremacy that is in our faiths. And so for me, it's incredibly important that we don't just plant seeds in ground that won't bear new growth, but that we understand while there are folks that we hope whose hearts will change, that it has to start here. That each of us has an opportunity and a responsibility to examine how open are we? What is our vision? Will the seed of light that we're planting, will it be received in the ground that we are creating? And will we tend it? Will we water it? So that when we come together next time, we are coming together to celebrate with one another, that we're coming together to understand that the shared vision of the common good of this city, of our state, of our country, and even our world is because we understand that our future is bound up so deeply with one another. Thank you. In light of what Rabbi Josh has said, why don't we take a minute and for you all to get up and meet somebody that you do not know. Say hello my brother, hello my sister, and get to know a different person please. And we're just gonna take a minute to do that so you gotta be really quick. Cause the folks sitting up here will probably kill me.
Okay, let's wrap it up. And Dr. Franklin, please join us up here. Yes, come on up. Over here, please. Right over here. All right. Oh. We're ready to restart. And I have to introduce you. I have a little speaker here, and that's my grandson, Zachariah. And he decided to get up on stage. Zachariah, you want to say something? All right, so now we're going to have a closing prayer by Bishop Robert C. Wright, the Episcopal Diocese of Atlanta. Bishop, where are you? Oh, okay, good. And Imam Pleman El Amin. Okay, I'll do a thing and then you got it. All right. Uh, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon. Uh, you see me sort of just rush in, uh, uh, forgive me for that, I'm, I'm rushing in from Columbus, Georgia, uh, but uh, I did not want to miss this uh, occasion. Uh, and uh, I, I'm so grateful for the organizers, uh, and uh, so many of them are friends, and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, this, this, uh, this work that we are doing here now, uh, this intervention uh, in a world uh, so full of hate is so important, and so it's so glad to see so many co-creators of this beloved community here gathered. Uh, we know God by many other names, uh, many names, deep traditions of knowing the divine, and yet here we are advancing the cause of love. Our presiding bishop, uh, you, may have know, you may know him, Michael Curry is the guy who preached the royal wedding uh, and, uh, and very famous for saying that uh, if it ain't about love, it's not about God. Uh, and, uh, and so we see that today. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of the things he goes on to tell so many of us that uh, talked to him after that royal wedding was so many stars and celebrities around the world contacted him thereafter and, uh, and, and praised him for his, uh, for his sermon and et cetera. But, but here's the part that I want to I wanna highlight for us. They went on to tell him to say, you know, please tell us that again. And he is a third generation preacher, and so he was a bit shocked to find that there were people who had not heard of a way to know God that is all love, that stands beside lots of different kinds of people in the way that they know love uh, as a sibling. And he was really arrested that some people thought that, uh, wow, this is new news, uh, and this is news they had not heard or not seen embodied. And so what you are doing here, uh, for your part, is a big deal. Because we go from this place, we take strength from one another, and we go out to make sure that we reverberate this sort of notion and reality and vibration in the world. That in fact, you can know God in the way that you know God, and I can know God in the way that I know God, and we can stand beside one another without diminishing the ways in which we know God together. Because at the end of the day, we know that God is love. We know God is love. Uh, if, if it's, it may have been said... Uh, already, but uh, today in the Christian tradition uh, is, uh, uh, is Palm Sunday. And it's a, it's a, it's a story of how uh, 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 Jesus uh, rode in uh, to Jerusalem uh, in great humility. And uh, the way I like to talk about it is, is he, he, he rode in on a donkey surrounded by simple people uh, to advance the cause of love. And that, that sends me to a, one of my favorite quotes from Dr. King, who said that justice is love overthrowing what is not lo everything that is not love. And I think we've got to understand love in that way today, that, that God would have us advance love. Love is not passive. Love is the most durable thing in the universe. And that you and I are increasing the square footage of love by being here and leaving here, and most importantly, with that revelation, with this glimpse of kingdom that you and I are developing together. This glimpse of kingdom of what could be, what is. My, uh, I have teenage children uh, who live in my house and uh, sometimes they're the best, uh, uh, best thermostat uh, for what we say, uh, we who, who spend a lot of time talking about God. And this is the kingdom of God, this glimpse that we're seeing right now, this is the thing that they think of when they're talking about God. 
that somehow you and I find the courage and the words and the humility and the, the appetite for reconciliation that leaves us beside one another. The rabbi said, the future. This is the imagination of the future that you and I have been entrusted with and that you and I have to bring forward. And so we'll leave it to the, uh, to the imam to say the last prayer, but my words to you are, are a prayer, a commission, an invitation, and that is to go from this place with a commitment to the gentle boldness that I believe all of our traditions want us to have, to go out into the world and overcome what is evil by doing what is good. And I know right now that for so many of us, as we are bombarded by this breaking news and these revelations of tragedy, I know the temptation for us is great to grow weary in doing what is good. But you and I ought to take courage that if we have a hope, it is not an optimism that you and I are manifesting or, uh, or, or producing ourselves, but the fact that you and I have hope that can say something back to hate is a very exhibit A of the fact that our hope comes from God. We are anchored in God, and that is our rocket fuel. That is what drives us forward. And so be encouraged today as you do the important work of being the beloved community, standing beside brothers and sisters, and standing with brothers and sisters who have endured great suffering, because we know that our hope is not in vain. So I wish you a wonderful afternoon, and more importantly, I wish you all that is necessary to release in the earth more love. It's in God's name I offer these words to you. I'll offer a closing prayer, but there will be two things that come after the prayer. There will be a call to action. So we're not leaving without a call to action. And also, any who have never uh, had the opportunity to go inside of this uh, beautiful edifice, uh, Michelle Farouk, uh, Dr. Sadiq will provide an inside tour. Uh, you will need to take your shoes off. And uh, we do have scars for the ladies to, to cover their, their beautiful hair. Uh, but that will be available after the call to action. If you want to tour the inside, then just please come up to this area, and Dr. Sadiq will lead that. Let us pray. O oh God of us all, creator, sustainer, and judge, most gracious, most merciful, master of the day of judgment, lead us from fear to trust, from despair to hope, from apathy to engagement, from hate to faith, and from death to life. May we remember the 51 martyrs in New Zealand. May we remember their families. May we remember the injured. Let us remember the city and their nation. We pray that each of us leaves this sacred space more thoughtful, more caring, more grateful, and more committed to justice, truth, decency, and righteousness. Let us accept the obligation to protect one another, to protect our homes, our neighborhoods, our city, and our sacred spaces. O oh Allah, let not our hearts deviate now that you have guided us. Grant us mercy from your presence, for you are the grant of bounties without measure. We pray, O oh God, that our entry was by the gate of truth and honor, and now make our exit by the gate of truth and honor, and give each of us and all of us the strength and fortitude to care more than others think is wise, to risk more than others think is safe, to expect more than others think is possible, and to pray more than others think is practical. To you, O oh God, belongs the praise. You have power and authority over all things. Amen, amen, amen. May God accept our prayers.
Thank you, Mom Pleeman. Thank you, Bishop Wright. I am touched and honored to be here with you all. And I feel good about what I heard today and about seeing you all together here today. How many of y'all feel good? Good. If you feel good about what you saw, that's just the beginning. Because that good feeling is worth nothing if you don't do anything. Because as Dr. Reverend Durley said, it's due season. You take that good feeling, you go home, and you do something to make yourself first a better person. Do something to improve yourself, improve your relationship with your family, with your neighbor, and with somebody you don't know who is different than you. Improve your relationship with God. Then, once you're done working on yourself, which by the way, you're never done with, take it to the next level and support a group. That group could be the church, the mosque, the synagogue, the temple, the gurdwara. It could be one of the many nonprofits that have supported this event and other events. It could be the people who benefit from the hunger walk coming up in a couple of weeks. It could be any number of opportunities that this beautiful city provides us, people of all different faiths and of no faith, to get involved. Take that good feeling and get involved, whether it's with your time, whether it's with your money, whether it's with your prayers or your talents. And then, let's take it to the state level. In Georgia, we are one of only five states in the U.S. with no hate crimes bill. We are proud to be working with a coalition to get a hate crimes bill passed in Georgia. There has been at least a 23% increase in religious-based hate crimes last year and 273 anti-Muslim Islamophobic hate crimes committed in the United States. We want to work towards fixing that. And a hate crimes bill in Georgia will just be a good start. So, it's time for Georgia to be hate free. It's time for our communities to be hate free. It's time for us personally to eliminate hate. So take that good feeling you have and remember, it's due season. It's time for us to work on ourselves, our communities, our state, and with God's help, the country and the world. Thank you all very much for coming. Peace. Salam. Let's let's see each other and meet each other again under better circumstances circumstances inshallah. Thank you.